perfect. So, hello everyone. Welcome to my presentation on uh, automated machine learning using uh, Azure AutoML. I'm really sorry for uh, all the issues regarding my audio. <coughs> audio. Uh, so, we are here to talk about automated machine learning today. And uh, before we jump into the presentation, uh, if I give a, like, a short intro about myself, I am Rahat Yasir, uh, five-time Microsoft MVP in uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, right now, I'm working at uh, OCDIA. Uh, it's a software company in uh, uh, Montreal uh, as a lead AI developer. And uh, thank you uh, for inviting me today uh, for this uh, amazing station. I have seen like uh, there were a bunch of like uh, uh, other speakers uh, have already talked uh, throughout the day. And uh, it looked very, um, very interesting on most of the sessions. And, uh, uh, as you are recording them, I will obviously go through. It's uh, 9 a.m. here, <laughs> so uh, I could not add in most of the sessions. Uh, so yeah, let's jump in. If there is an issue with the audio, please let me know. I will uh, try to uh, fix that one. Okay. So automated machine learning or AutoML. So if uh, it was it was not a virtual session, I would have asked uh, all of you how many people are familiar with uh, into a machine learning uh, platform, or uh, how many people uh, today are working with uh, a machine learning or data science or designing uh, AI models. So before I jump into automated machine learning, I would like to talk about uh, a bit about um, the in general into a machine learning uh, like uh, pipeline. So on this screen, we can see uh, an into a machine learning pipeline. So there are three sections here. Prepare data, build and train model, and uh, deploy and predict model. So, in any kind, any kind of like machine learning application designing, yes, we can use those tools like uh, cognitive services, uh, Azure AutoML, or Azure Machine Learning Designer. But uh, to as a developer, as a software engineer, when we are designing an end-to-end -end platform for data science or machine learning, we need to walk a bit further. We need to go a bit more further. We need to know what are the data processing steps, what are the model building steps, what are the deployment steps, and what happens after we deploy the model. So uh, on the screen, uh, the diagram you can see, this is actually uh, describing the entire machine learning ecosystem. So it starts from here on the uh, left, left uh, bottom, which is data storage. So we have about we can have different kind of data storage. It could be uh, Hadoop based or uh, kind of like S3 bucket or blob storage or anything else. So we the first thing in any kind of like machine learning pipeline is we need to ingest the data. So this is our data storage. We are ingesting the data through different kind of ingestion data ingestion pipeline. That pipeline could be uh, batch or mini batches or a live stream or just a data source. So once we load the data, we are doing, the first step that we are doing uh, is preparing the data, which is data preparation. On the data preparation steps, there are four or five uh, like sub steps. They are mostly data wrangling and processing, data transformation, data validation, and data featureization or feature engineering. So if I talk a bit about each of them, what happened? Data wrangling and processing, obviously, uh, we know, uh, uh, like, we have data, suppose, and we will have to design modeling on that data. If the data is not properly clean, if the data is not properly processed, end of the day, whichever algorithm we use, we will come up with some garbage result. So data wrangling, data processing, data normalization is, is one of the, like, uh, key steps to, of this, like, on any kind of, like, machine learning application designing. So whenever, like, what do you, what do I mean by data processing or uh, data validation? So suppose you are designing a price prediction model. Price prediction could be uh, predicting uh, the price for um, for cars or something like that. So in that case, uh, you are using XGBoost algorithm or some kind of like regressional algorithm. So in, uh, so the, once you load the data, then you have noticed that. The data is not clean. There are lots of like missing values. So you need to handle that, like those missing values in a way where 
uh, those won't be like you won't lose those records and at the same time you won't impute those missing values with garbage zero or null or none those kind of like uh, uh, empty or uh, like useless values so what you can do you can impute uh, mean medium uh, those kind of like uh, uh, statistical values uh, at, in, like on the missing values or uh, missing uh, like uh, uh, rows and then that's one step you can have like the data that you have loaded suppose uh, the data is representing date time but it is in string format or it is in some other format so you need to change the data type or data format so it is a data um, transformation step and a lot of times when we design models model cannot consume a uh, random data format it needs to like to we need to convert the model uh, data type in a way where it is consumable by the model so uh, maybe a lot of us have heard about one hot encoding suppose in one of our data columns there are four or five category of data uh, suppose one two three four five and there are 1000 records of uh, data uh, comprising those one to three four five so now when we are doing the modeling before sending that data column to a um, uh, algorithm we need to apply one hot encoding on that one so what is happening on one hot encoding we are taking uh, the all the data we are identifying how many categories are there here the category number is five one two three four five and then when we are applying the one hot encoding that one value is becoming zero 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 one uh, that two value is becoming zero 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 one zero and that five value the last value is becoming uh one zero 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 kind of like that so those are important steps and if i look at data featureization or feature engineering the last step or of data preparation that is another interesting because a lot of times we cannot just send the data uh, as it is to our model we need to uh, process it uh, in a way where suppose we have a uh, we have a data column uh, for driver uh, date of birth so uh, it is the model that is predicting about uh, uh, driver performance how the driver is riding the car and everything so in that case uh, we have the uh, date of uh, birth but we don't know what like what is and the feature in our model is age so in that case we need to write a feature engineering recipe on that recipe there could be few steps so the first step will step will be we are loading the data and then once we load the data we are trans like checking the data type data type of that format that column once we check the data type which is if it is string we need to convert that string data type to a uh, date time format uh, then we need to identify date difference from current today's date to the da uh, date of birth of the uh, driver and then we will get the actual age of the driver so those three or four steps are called feature engineering steps or feature engineering recipe so loading the data checking the date time like data format uh, converting it into a date time format and then uh, i like finding out date difference from today's date to uh, like uh, to, to the uh, driver's date of birth, and then we are actually getting the uh, like age of the driver. So uh, we apply all kind of like data processing, data transformation, normalization, feature engineering on this first phase, and the second phase actually consume all the new modified data, which is the second phase is model building and training. So as a data scientist, when we, you are designing something, a model, so you have a lot of options of like algorithm selection. So which algorithm you are going to choose? Uh, you will choose the algorithm based on the, um, based on the data category and also based on how you are like the business requirements. If you are classifying the data, you will select classification algorithm there are a lot of classification algorithm in the market if you're doing regression you will select regression algorithm if you're doing some kind of like object detection you can do deep learning based cnn based you can do use pre-trained net network so before we train the model we need to know which algorithm we are going to use to train the model so this is the first part so what is AutoML doing here 
So AutoML is kind of ap applying a brute force approach. So how brute force approach? So it is uh, taking the data. It is applying all sorts of uh, like feature. It's designing uh, or coming up with different combination of features uh, or, or feature engineering. And then if you select, user will have to select whether it's a, a classification problem, time series problem, or regression problem. If you select time series, it will apply all the time series algorithm it has on its library on different feature sets with different uh, hyperparameter tuning so that it will have it will have a roster uh, or queue of uh, like results kind of like feature engineering one with algorithm one gave us 95% uh, accuracy feature engineering two on algorithm one will is giving us 80% accuracy kind of like that and once we select the model, before we do anything, we need to like uh, tra uh, do the training of the model. So uh, as we know, after we train the model, we get a binary file. And the when we are training the model, there are a bunch of hyperparameters as well. And if we go back to the example of uh, um, uh, like XGBoost, so if you have selected XGBoost as your algorithm, you have modified the data. Now you are uh you uh, like you will see that you have a bunch of hyperparameter those hyperparameter are 5 6 10 15 values uh like those the value of hyperparameter could be continuous or could be discrete it depends on your compute power how you will do hyperparameter tuning and you will have to create combination of hyperparameters to find out and run your uh, model training and validations on different testing and validation sets to see which combination of hyperparameter is giving you the best result for this set of feature uh, and for this algorithm. So that's our like step number three uh, for model building and training. Then we are uh, testing the model whenever we are designing any kind of like machine learning application. We are splitting the data into three different categories usually. 60% uh, of the data we consider them as training, 20% as uh, uh, validation and 20% as uh, testing and the end at the, the last part of uh, our uh, billing and training is model validation once everything is done and we are uh, uh, strongly uh, confident that our model is performing well and we can put it in production uh, to predict different kind of numbers then we will use that number like uh, that model which is uh, like a binary file so Okay, uh, now the third part, which is deep line predict. We can design a bunch of models, but if we do not put them in production and uh, like inference or test them on real data, there is no value of that model. So we need to deploy that model. So if just uh, think about Facebook, uh, when we are uh, scrolling through Facebook uh, homepage, uh, it looks like a single page application, but with a different kind of like, uh, um pages stations different kind of like features so or any any kind of single page application one model uh just give us one number so it receives a bunch of data uh, a row of data in inferencing mode and then predict us or give us a single value that single value could be a prediction could be a, a time series based forecasting so in an ideal world where if you if your application is heavily relying on machine learning a single page application can have hundreds of models in the in the backend. So when you're deploying that those models are uh, like how you're deploying them, you are those models are binary files and there could be some pre and post processing Python files before and after. So we are containerizing those models, putting them in a nice container and also putting them in an API so that other application or existing applications can call them and uh, by like uh, can request uh, the models and the request with a bunch of data, get the response of the, the prediction, and then use it on the uh, database or uh, show it on the UI. So we need to deploy the model in that kind of environment with all the, like uh, co after containerizing them, converting them into an API. Sometimes we do batch scoring or batch prediction. If you have, if you don't have live data, you have, a bunch of historical data after coming up with the model you will 
uh, run them in mini batches or batches to do score them or label them. And the last part of machine learning ecosystem is model monitoring. So you need when you're putting a model in production, you need to monitor the model, whether it's performing well or not, how much resource it's consuming, uh, what is the runtime it's having. So if it is not performing well, if it is taking extra time than it actually requires, if it is uh, if the model is not relevant, then you can you should retrain the model and discontinue the overall operation of the model from that moment. So uh, why why the model will be irrelevant if you ask me uh, during the model monitoring process? So suppose if you design a model uh, based on the retail industry uh, or the fashion industry, you have collected a bunch of data from uh, Pinterest which is a fashion blogging site. So, and you have collected last six months of Pinterest data, trained the model, and it is successfully recommending uh, fashion trends uh, of today's date or based on different users' choice. But after six months, you will realize that fashion trend has shifted and whatever your model was predicting is not relevant anymore. So in that case, what you will have to do so what people do when you are designing the model, uh, you can have 50 to 100 features. So uh, do you need to monitor all the feature values always? No, not all the values are impacting the model performance and prediction in the same way. So there is out of 50 features, maybe five or 10 features are the most impactful feature. When you are doing the model development, you will have to identify the most um, impactful features as well and then you will have to uh, come up with distribution of training data of those five or ten impactful features and once you come up with those uh, impactful features and if you uh, you have the distribution with the new data on inference or in production you will have to uh, you will just use a batch or mini batches and then you will see the new data where the distribution is falling in uh, based on the uh, like the distribution of the training data. If you notice that there is a drift of uh, distribution uh, in, of the uh, of the impactful features, then you will realize that uh, your model is becoming irrelevant. You will have to retrain it. So the retraining is another interesting thing. When you're retraining a model, are you going to entirely use the new set of data uh, by discarding old data? No. You cannot retraining the model by just like considering the new data. You need to come up with a strategy of keeping or keeping a ratio of both old and new data uh, to retrain the model so that the model will have uh, the knowledge that he has, he has already, it has already learned. And also it will have new knowledge for the new set of data. So uh, that's a small uh, overview of uh, end to end machine learning process. Uh, I felt uh, that it is necessary before we jump into an automated ML uh, like uh, model designing. So, okay. The next part is automated machine learning process. So what is happening in automated machine learning? So we have the data set. We are also selecting a bunch of optimization metric and feeding them into an, our automated machine learning pipeline. So automated machine learning a cloud-based tool. It's a very new tool designed by Microsoft Azure AutoML. Uh, they launched it, it's still in preview, and they launched it a few months ago. And once we upload our data, once we send it to an optimization metric, and then send it, uh, select the optimization metric and send it to our uh, automated machine learning um, platform, we are, it is doing all the work, all the hard work of feature engineering, model selection, algorithm selection, hyperparameter tuning, training, and then it is also coming up with the best possible combination of features, best possible combination of hyperparameters, and best algorithm for that set of data and optimization metric. And it is also spinning us the ML model and all the pre and post processing uh, Python code as well. And what it is, uh, doing it is saving our time and cost both. I will give you some example as well too. So if we see a bit more um, example on that one, so as I already said, uh, as in automated machine learning, it is inputting data set target matrix. Uh, it is designing uh, a bunch of features by itself, feature one, two, three, four. 
It is also coming up with all the best machine learning algorithms in class um, and using them on different categories. The categories, could, there are three categories right now. Um, classification, um, then um, uh, regression and time series. And then the parameters are hyperparameter. And then it will give you a leaderboard with all the training scores. The rank one, two, three represents the best combination of features, algorithm, and parameters. And score 95 is the uh, score, uh, the accuracy. So, okay, uh, we had a, like a, a small overview. Next 30, 30, 35 minutes, we will give uh, mostly demo of the uh, auto automated ML. If we go to the uh, dashboard, okay. So I am on uh, ml.asvue.com. Uh, ML so in this site, so where you can see um, if you are doing automated machine learning or want to use machine learning studio designer section, you can use it from here. So the first thing is, uh, this is the dashboard. You can see it's, st it's still in preview version. So when we are logging in, ml.azure.com, we need to give our uh, email ID and also our subscription and uh, workspace. The workspace we are selecting, we need to select it, we need to create it from Azure portal. So just go to uh, uh, Azure. So if I just go there, I had one open. This one. <clears throat> yeah, so I am on portal.azure.com. So here is my Azure portal. I believe uh, all of you are familiar with Azure portal. I'm just creating a uh, create a resource. And the resource I need to create is machine learning. Uh, and then I am create, clicking select or create. And I will write a workspace name, subscription, whichever subscription you have. I have a couple of multiple subscription, uh, the resource group, uh, the location and workspace edition. And then we will review and create the uh, workspace. It takes uh, uh, sometimes a couple of minutes to create it. That's why I'm keeping that step, but uh, that's the way of creating it. Once we create it, uh, as we are going to design a uh, an, uh, machine learning application, we need a data set as well. So I am using a uh, public data set from Kaggle. So just go to kaggle.com uh, slash C slash Titanic slash data. Then uh, the data section tab. After that, uh, there is few files .csv. Select the train .csv and download this one. If you are not, if you don't have a Kaggle account, then you will have to create an account or sign in uh, to download this one. So I'm just like clicking and downloading. It is downloaded. So you can uh, follow it and like do that. So the third part, like next part, is our automated machine learning. So I am on uh, ml.azure.com now. Uh, we have, uh, if we, if you have already followed the steps, then you have the data set. You should have the data set. And also, uh, you should have created a machine learning workspace. Or you can also use your existing machine learning workspace. Once you go to ml.azure.com, uh, give your email address and subscription, uh, it will also fetch, fetch all the existing machine learning based workspace and you can select it from this drag and drop, uh, drag and drop. So, okay. Let's, uh, jump into like, a, we are not doing any, uh, experiment using notebook today. That's why I'm not showing it. And the designer section, uh, whoever is familiar with, uh, Azure Machine Learning Studio in the past, the Azure Machine Learning Studio has become as the Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Designer. So, if you're familiar with that, you can try and play with this. But today we will mostly show and focus on automated machine learning. So let's create an automated machine learning run. Uh, I have selected this one. And then I'm clicking new automated ML run. 
I haven't go through all the other uh, like tabs, assets or manage. I will go through them uh, after showing a sample uh, process of creating one um, run with a new set of data. So now I'm going to select a new data set. Though I have uploaded, I have those data sets here, but I'm just creating a new one. I can set the data source from the, I can say data source, web file, open data set. I'm just like, I have a uh, CSV file. I'm just selecting it from here. I need to browse it from my machine. So suppose I'm selecting this one. Uh, just renaming it. Titanic survival data set, virtual global AI bootcamp. Okay. I've selected this, open. You can see the data set is already uploaded. The size is tiny, 0 0.10033 MB is the name, description. If you click on the advanced section, you will see it is uploaded as a as your blob storage. Uh, you can see the container, UI and everything. I'm clicking next. You can see the file format uh, in delimiter. Uh, delimiter is comma, uh, the encoding type, and all the other issues. If we want to skip a bunch of rows, we can also skip it from uh, from here, or there are other ways as well. And if we want to have like a small uh, overview, this is you can see like a small visualization of the data set. Next. So you can see uh, in my data set, there are 12 to 14 columns and 1400 rows. So you can see all of them are here. Uh, if I want to exclude uh, some, uh, some of the columns, I can do that from here. Uh, there's some noise. Can everyone uh, mute your... Uh, Go to meeting. Thank you. Okay. So when we are designing a model, we don't need the name. So because uh, name has nothing to do to do prediction, and this data set, the Titanic, what it is doing, it has. We all know about Titanic. We all know, like a lot of people died on that uh, like uh, journey, and uh, in this data set, you can see uh, all the passengers' names. Uh, their age group, sex, all the other information, along with the survival column, where it is also telling that single passenger survived or not. So we don't need the name. We are just excluding that one like this. We need age, everything else. We don't need the home district, home destination, home and destination. We don't need, if we want need some help, if we go on the right, you can see the type of the data and also uh, some example of that uh, column. So you can see in we have a column with null, 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 these kind of values. So we don't want that as well. So I have excluded a bunch of um, features on my columns, and then I'm selecting next. So uh, here it is, the uh, selected file, name, data set version, tabular, and all of them are ready. If we just click create, uh, we will create the data set. Yes, it is done. Uh, the data set is created. Uh, the time, modified time and everything. Okay. If I click create, configure and run, what will happen? So now we will have to give an experiment name. So our experiment name is virtual global AI bootcamp Titanic. So we need to give a target column. So we are, as we are training a model uh, where we are, uh, the model is going to learn about all the passenger in more information and going to predict whether that passenger is going to survive or not. So the target column will be survival. So survived. And then we need to select a compute. So what kind of compute machine we are going to use to uh, uh, to do this machine learning process or auto auto ML process. So here, if you create a, like a new compute machine, a uh, new compute cluster, we'll have to provide a compute name, suppose B4, uh, and then we'll select uh, a uh, like a RAM, like a, any kind of standard uh, VM or any kind of like a heavyweight machine as well. So 
from the compute cluster here you can select gpu based machine 2 but uh, for this application i'm not doing anything like that anything fancy and if you click uh, additional settings you can also select a number of nodes it could be two three four six it will uh, you can also select uh, auto scaling uh, it will automatically scale up and scale down based on your computation and need so when you click create it will take two to four minutes to create the um, compute engine for you on your uh, Azure in instance. But here for this application, I'm not creating that as I have a bunch of uh, uh, computation machines that are already created. I'm using B2 uh, just to save the time. And I'm clicking next. So that's the next, next step, uh, which is we need to select the task type. As I already said, Azure Machine Learning uh, AutoML uh, have three ta different ta like a task types that it can handle. One is classification, one is regression, one is time series, and also there is a, a new option that I can I have seen enable deep learning preview where uh, like though I haven't used it, it will do classification based on deep learning uh, um, approach. So in this uh, application, we are doing a binary classification where based on the passenger data we are predicting that person survived or not so it is a classification problem it is not a regression problem or time series problem so we have selected the classification and click finish so what it will do now it will automatically create a machine learning um uh, or like a, a entire pipeline it will do the feature engineering by itself, it will select a bunch of machine learning models. How many? It will select 45 machine learning models. Uh, and also, it will uh, do all the hyperparameter tuning and come up with different kind of set of uh, combinations and will give us uh, the best feature engineering uh, recipe with the best algorithm for that data set uh, with the best accuracy and best combination of hyperparameters. So how long does it take? Uh, each model, as I said, there are 45 uh, classification models. And on this data set, it takes two to three minutes to run each of them on n number of uh, hyperparameters and features. So if I run it, it will take one to two hours and we will have to wait. So we are not going to do it. You can see uh, from the run details, it's classification, accuracy, run status preparing, and uh, the name and everything, and a bunch of other is, is stuff. So I will directly jump on the results section because I have already ran it yesterday, and I I can show you what will happen once you complete the entire two hours long running process. So I'm canceling it here and going back to AutoML section. So I have this Titanic survival too. You can see I have completed this one. It is uh, two days old and it took me one hour 25 minutes. I'm clicking this one to see what uh, we would have seen if we have like uh, continued the training process. So this is the dashboard that uh, would have uh, appeared after completing it. So you can see if it was still running, there was some like running status or if it, it didn't run, some failing. Five, this five is representing all the other metrics based calculations, uh, exploration, uh, scoring uh, those modules. And this 45 completed are 45 completed runs. They are representing 45 uh, algorithms as well. So you can see our uh, recall score, F1 score, uh, the metric value zero to one, nine, one is 100%, 0 0.6 is the lowest one. And on different runs, you can see Run number 49 has given us the maximum accuracy, 97.7 something. Uh, okay, and if we go down, you can see the status of all the runs. Run 51, run 50, all of them. Uh, you can scroll one by one here. So the interesting part is run one, which is uh, which took one hour, 17 minutes, and on my B2 Compute Engine, which is a run that is AutoML, uh, combines all the other algorithmic runs. So if, if I click this one, you can see the recommended model after all the 45 uh, model training is voting ensemble algorithm. The metric value is 97.7% accuracy. 
It took 2.16 minutes to run that one. And I have also deployed. You just need to click. If you are satisfied with the model and you are you think you will put it in production, you will just click deploy this model. And then you will give a name, uh, anything, description, and you will have to put a compute type. So there are two types of compute here, AKS and ACI. ACI represents Azure Container Instance, and uh, AKS represents Azure Kubernetes Service. Um, so here, if you are doing a production-rated clustering of uh, model deployment, then I'll suggest you to select AKS. If you're doing uh, deploying a single model, then you will select ACI. I'm sele uh, I have selected ACI. You can have different kind of authentication process, or you can just discard the authentication if you're just testing it. And on the advanced section, you can have SL uh, like certification, and also you can select uh, the reserve the capacity one core. Uh, two memory, two gig of memory for your uh, the container of your model. So if your model is uh, the latency of your uh, of the prediction of your model is really high, then you will have to add more resources uh, here. If you if you also notice that uh, uh, your model is uh, other than the latency, it is it's a heavyweight model. It it requires a lot of resources. Then you will have to increase the memory uh, like memory limit and also CPU as well. And then once you click deploy, it will take five to 10 minutes to deploy it. When it will deploy, it will deploy it in a nice container with all the, uh, it will also create an API for you. So if we just like click here, we can see it, what it has done for me. Uh, once I click deploy. So, okay, we are loading the page. <clears throat> Yep, uh, the deployment status is healthy. Compute type ACI, the one I have already deployed. Service ID is uh, Titanic survival to deploy. I created this date. There's, they have also provided me a REST point where I can just like uh, uh, use it as an a REST API, a RESTful service. Uh, there, I, I did not uh, enable any kind of like authentication. That's why both of them are false. The CPU is one CPU, two gig of memory and all the other information. And if you see the consume, uh, the rest endpoint again here. So, okay, what else was there? So as we said uh, that uh, we have ran 45 algorithms, um, so what are they? If you click on the model section, you can see all the all the list of like uh, algorithms here, uh, max upscaler SGD, XGBoost, LightGBM, uh, and you can see the accuracy. Uh, duration as well and if you want to download the model like individual models and deploy it in your own cluster you can just like go and download the base model it will you can see that it's downloaded as model.pkl file pickle or if you want to instead of using the best model you want to use your own model suppose the max app scalar light gbm you can just click download and it will be downloaded the binary file so, okay, and you can see all the list of models. The worst model in, in my case is Max AppScaler SGD, which showed only 61% accuracy. And if you go to data uh, guardrails, uh, you can see there were cross validation applied on the during the training process, and the number of holes were three. The class balancing were, were detected. So, it is also important for any kind of machine learning application. Uh, the number of Classes or the ratio of uh, different like uh, classes, zero or one, survival or uh, survived or not, needs to be same. Otherwise, the result of the model will be biased. So uh, it is detected well. It was also maintained automatically. The missing values, as I said at the beginning, there could be missing values, null or empty values in your data set. So when there is an uh, empty value, it is handled as mean. Uh, by AutoML automatically. Same in pair column had some missing values. It was imputed as mean as well. And the last one is uh, high cardinality feature detection. So the most impact, uh, like impactful features, so or least impact, like uh, uh, yeah, um, 
high cardinality inputs on, from the data set uh, in this feature, like uh, from the feature feature set, uh, name, cabin, uh, or home desk, those values. So okay, if we see the properties, uh, it's uh, just the general information. Compute target, primary metric accuracy, deep learning was visible, and you can also set a training time. So and max concurrent inter iteration. So there were like six max concurrent iterations were happening as the number of nodes on my compute engine was six. That's why it's six here. And if you are running a big machine, big uh, not big machine, sorry, big uh, data set, uh, big model training, then you will have to uh, increase the number of training time. I my one is small, that's why I selected three. And if you are interested in detail, like logs and everything, you can get in over there. And also you can see the output. For output, I will show a different tab actually. So let's go back uh, on the model section. The boating ensemble is the best model uh, here. Let's click it here. So now we will see all the information regarding boating ensemble. So all the uh, average precision score, accuracy, balance accuracy, F1, recall, log loss, all the uh, evaluation metrics. If we click visualization, if I am interested to see ROC curve and uh, true positive, true negative, those things, you can see precision recall, ROC curve. So this curve represents 50%, uh, like, and the farther the actual curve is from this curve, it means the better the accuracy is. It is not a, like a random model. It is actually able to detect uh, those uh, survival situations well. Uh, and there is lift cur curve as well, calibration curve, and the confusion matrix, where you can see uh, the true positive, uh, true negative, false positive, false negative values from here. And if we explanation, so it's another interesting thing. Uh, a lot of times, uh, if we are designing any uh, machine learning application or machine learning model training on financial data, we cannot just design a model and consider it, consider it as a black box and uh, start to predict insurance pricing or interest calculation, those things. We need to explain it to different governance body. So that's why we have this explanation uh, tab. It takes a bit time to load. Uh, you can see there's a, like a, large data set causing increased delay in loading explanation but uh, you can have the explainability of your model based on different metrics through this feature and i am just canceling that one because it's taking a lot of time to load but you guys can try it uh, at home when you're uh, if you're playing with the auto ml tool with this data set um, yeah and uh, when you are selecting oh, i see loading and also, don't forget uh, this uh, preview version of uh, Azure uh, Machine Learning uh, Automated ML is only available in enterprise um, section of machine learning. So when you are creating a, a workspace, um, just uh, select instead of like basic tire, uh, select the enterprise tier so that uh, you will get all the benefits. And it's free for now. So you don't need to like uh, spend any extra dollars. So OK, I'm going back to another tab and as that tab is not responding. So we were going to see the uh, model for LAN 49, which is uh, the voting ensemble, the best one. We were stuck in uh, explanation. Now see the log and output. So, okay, I'm interested to show the output to everyone. So you can see uh, to deploy the best model, it has also given us a bunch of output values, so files. So the first one is conda environment.yaml file. If we want to create a similar environment using conda to deploy your model, test your model, it is there. If you uh, want to uh, like see what are the other libraries that you need for training, deployment, testing, in, in the in, in underscore dependencies.json has uh, all the dependency files or like library information with the version number. There is the model.pkl, the best uh, trained model that is also there. You can just download it. The scoring file, if you want to test it uh, in your local machine, you need a, like a Python script to send the data to test it, that uh, binary file, before you put it in production. 
it is also automatically created for you with a sample of data you can see the uh, p class name this sample is taken from the uh, test case it is also created the accuracy table uh, automatable driver dot py so uh, driver uh, code as well uh, it's a huge one so the enter code is automatically written uh, generated just from by the automatable just for you and pipeline graph configuration matrix everything so all those uh, like uh, things are automatically uh, generated um, so you don't need to do anything you will just select the model uh, select the data pass the data the feature engineering and everything will be done automatically so okay I want to show one more interesting thing so if I have if there is any issue with my data set so suppose I am selecting a new data set and this data set is auto uh, like automated mobile price detection automobile uh, price data detection so I'm selecting this one uh, loaded uploaded so here instead of uh, identifying classes like whether that uh, someone is survived or not which is like a binary classification I am predicting a price which is a regressional problem so you can see uh, I have all the definition of all the uh, values we are going to predict price and if we go right you can see the type of that column is string but the values are integer or numeric so we need to change it that's why that's why this uh, like uh, option is there but if we don't change it what will happen we are just selecting it as a string type and then we are loading this data set now we have selected this the data set that just i just uploaded experiment type uh fred two column type uh call, like column we need to select the price and compute engine i'm just selecting my b2 next i'm creating the config in the run here as we are predicting a numerical value we are selecting regression instead of classification and then we are clicking finish what will happen what do you think is it gonna run as the prediction column is string it needs to be numeric yeah there is an error user error for task is equal to regression y which is the target column should be numeric so when we are doing that we are when we are doing our training our model we need to uh, be careful about those issues okay if we go back to automated machine learning create a new one uh, select the that data set again and load it but this time what we will do we will uh, change the column type of uh, price okay we are selecting uh, we're going down this one string instead of keeping it string we are selecting as integer because the values that are representing are in numeric and then next create then I'm selecting this one the one I just uploaded and experiment type red three column type is uh, price and compute type is p2 and next and as the type is regression i'm selecting regression finish now do you think i'll get the error going to get the error no uh it has started to run and run status starting there's no error there's no issue but i can cancel it so that was a simple demo on auto automated ml uh, if I give, uh, it takes a bit time to cancel. Okay. <clears throat> if I give a small uh, tour of list of the sections, then we can go to data set. All the data sets we have uploaded are here. If I click on the data set, you can see one interesting feature. Uh, or from, from here, whenever we are uploading a data set, I forgot to show it. Um, we can just select it here. You can see the data preview. Uh, you will see all like a fraction of the data from your data set here. And also data statistics. This data statistics is automatically created just for you. 
And what it is doing, it has taken all the columns, all the features, and created different uh, statistics of this data, like P class, survival. You can see there are two classes only, 800 cases on survival, like did not survive, died. One and 489 cases uh, are survived, one. Uh, there were 843 uh, male and uh, 466 female on the data set. And uh, age group, you can see different distribution on the age group. 22, uh, 20, 16 to 24 uh, had the most amount of uh, uh, like passengers, which is 270. Uh, 24 to 32 has second best, which is like 252. And all the other information, all the other classes with different mix, mean, max, count those values. And if you go to experiments, all the experiments you run, you can see their pipeline. Um, here, if you use the uh, designer version of auto, uh, auto like of uh, as you machine learning, you will see different pipelines here. As I did not, that's why there is no. All the models that I have trained uh, will be uh, here. I have completed two models. That's why there are two only. In point, after like uh, if i deploy the model you will find the model here uh, the inform deployed information i have deployed two models that's why all the information say here compute you can create your compute cluster for both training and inferencing you can see i have a three uh, like compute cluster b1 b2 i have used b2 most of the cases and uh, the b3 i was trying it then i canceled the inferencing cluster after putting it in production, you can also have a like inferencing cluster based on Azure Kubernetes service. You can have it here. And you can have different data sources. Uh, here, it's mostly blob storage based and data labeling. So uh, if I go back to my presentation, uh, that's it. That was a simple demo on automated machine learning and end-to-end -end machine learning process. How does it work? And if you have a data set, if you're not a data scientist, uh, you want to just try different so like different data sets on different compute engines, you can try this um, like approach. It is very easy, very handy. As a data scientist or as an AI engineer, if I like, uh, like or all the existing uh, industry players, when they're doing this kind of like brute force based, uh, based training, it takes them six months uh, just to do all the plumbing, all the uh, like library designing, creating that end-to-end -end, uh, operation. But aut Azure Automated uh, ML has like made everything so easy that you can do it in a couple of hours or a few hours. So thank you. Ask me any question if you have, or connect me in Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, you can tweet me on uh, on AnIND0, or you can find me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn slash uh, Rahat Yasir. Thank you. If you have any questions, please ask me. Right. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah so, I can hear you. Uh, yeah. When do we enable the deep learning options there? So uh, what is the criteria for the that? The deep learning option is only available. It's in preview section. And it is only available for classification. So if you want to apply, like, uh, convolutions or deep learning on your classification and uh, do classification like a uh, dog cat those kind of like classification problems then you can do that uh, but it's totally new feature personally I haven't tried the deep learning version from Azure Auto ML uh, for that kind of image classification you can also use a custom vision toolkit but uh, you can just uh, try it and play with it uh, so yeah yeah sure Thanks. No problem. Uh, any other question? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.